So our first question is pretty simple, which is, what is a ring system anyway? When Galileo observed Saturn, um, he thought that Saturn was a triple star system because at times it looked like Saturn had these sort of two roundish bodies on either side. And of course, this is because his telescope, while it was the best resolution of its time, wasn't a good enough resolution to um, see those rings for what they were. Um, he was also kind of confused on why those smaller bodies sometimes seemed to disappear completely. Um, and uh, Huygens, a Dutch astronomer and um, physicist, reasoned why we see those different types of shapes at different times. So Galileo started with this triple star system, eventually refined the idea to perhaps thinking that Saturn had this kind of handle shape, but it still didn't make sense why sometimes these disappeared. And Huygens was able to um, map out what the rings would look like given the axial tilt of Earth, the axial tilt of Saturn, and um, the different orbital locations of Saturn with respect to the Earth. And so this is a sketch of you know, how Saturn in its different locations in its orbit results in all these different shapes that we can see through a telescope. And so this was really um, a critical confirmation that these rings are in fact ring shaped. Um, and so this is just kind of a animation of what that would look like uh, from a, an observer's position on Earth if you looked at Saturn throughout the entire Earth year. Okay, so once we figured out that Saturn's rings were indeed rings and not some other, you know, moons or some other bodies, then the question was, um, are they one piece or are they sort of a collection of smaller objects? So I want to ask you here, um, how would a solid piece move and how would that be different than how a collection of pieces would move? And given those two ideas, um, how, what could we measure about the rings to distinguish between those motions and figure out whether uh, the rings are one solid piece or a collection of small objects. And what we find is that uh, the smaller, uh, I guess, inner edge of the ring, those particles are indeed going faster than the particles that are on the outer edge of the ring. So we do know, and it, even if we couldn't resolve that these are individual particles from our far distance, we can say that um, the speed of the outside of the ring is slow, the speed of the inside of the ring is fast, and therefore it can't be a solid body. All right, so this is one key confirmation that Saturn's rings uh, are a collection of particles which all obey Kepler's laws. Um, and since then, we've been able to get more and more detailed high resolution uh, images of the rings, and we can actually confirm that indeed those particles are made of water ice and they're, they range in size, but they're around kind of you know, I guess, small objects, small icy objects to about boulder sized icy objects. Okay, so Saturn's not the only Jovian planet that has a ring. All these Jovian planets have a ring system and actually rings are not even a feature that only Jovian planets can have. Other types of planets and other objects can have rings and some of the, um, what we call trans-Neptunian objects, uh, similar to Pluto, some of those do have rings. Um, so the types of rings though can be very different. So right now Saturn has a very bright and, and fairly thick ring. And so it, it gives off a lot of light and we see it very clearly in images of Saturn. But in contrast, the rings of Uranus and Neptune are thin. They're very low in mass compared to Saturn's rings and they are dark in color. So they're made not of water ice, but of um, darker, um, I guess, kind of tar-like substance that is similar to the composition of, um, of some of the other outer solar system objects. So these are kind of, you know, dark and tarry rings versus white and icy rings. 